So whether it's big or small, a ratchet strap is a modern marvel that is at once super convenient and super frustrating. When you decide to take a ratchet strap, once you find it, and use it to tie down a load safely, the first thing you have to figure out is how do I unwind this from the last time I used it? Now this is the way I usually do it. Okay, so at least you have a chance of putting this thing into play without a bunch of knots in the line. That's item one. The next puzzle is how do I tie the bitter end of this, which by the way, pretty much always has some kind of a hook on it. How do I tie it to the other side of my truck or trailer or headache rack or whatever I'm securing a load to and keep it there while I work my way back over to this side to operate the windlass? So on trailers, or at least on heavy duty trailers, you often have two alternatives for tying a ratchet strap to the trailer itself. There's often a little hook and there's often a stake pocket. A stake pocket is a friendlier solution if your hook is small enough to drop through the stake pocket. Because if you hook it like that, gravity becomes your friend. Now you've already encountered the opposite problem, and it's this. You try to hook the hook onto a hook and go over to the other side, and by the time you get there, it's come off. And so you have to, you know, bring your bride out or call a friend or get a kid or you know, do whatever you're gonna do. One alternative, if you don't have stake pockets, or if the hook is too big to go through the pocket, is to use the eye of the hook instead of the hook. Sometimes, gravity will keep the thing on there while you go to the other side of the trailer and pull it tight. So here's my preferred way. Drop the hook through the stake pocket, bam. Go back around to the other side of the trailer and do whatever I want, because that's not coming off until I take it off. So now we're back over on the live action side of what we're trying to accomplish. That is, I can see and manipulate and play with where the action's gonna happen. After it's through the windlass, run it back and point it to the other side of the load. Hold the tension, operate the windlass. Slick. Now here's a big deal, and it's this, that if you're pulling a tight piece of nylon webbing across the edge of something sharp, like the top of that plywood. And if you don't put a twist in the line, and if it's bridging quite a distance through the rapidly moving 70 mile an hour wind that's blowing across here, you get a resonance, right? And it's flopping and it's vibrating and it's cutting itself in half. I very nearly cut my ratchet strap two days ago when I hauled this up north. I didn't put the twist in the line. And when I got there, I thought, wow, hypocrite. You know, take some of your own medicine once in a while and pay a little more attention to the safety, not only for the people around you, but for the safety of the strap itself. Now, let me drill just a little deeper. And the reason that a twist, a half twist or a full twist in a long unsupported span, the reason that takes the resonance out is because the wind is not pushing on the edge of a tight line, but it's pushing on both of the sides. And so the pushing on both the sides holds it, in fact, still and in fact, safer for everybody on the road. So long before you get to this point of tying your load down with your ratchet strap, if you have the luxury of having different sizes straps available, spend some time thinking about balancing your strap to the load, right? I mean, ratchet straps come in a wide variety of sizes and um, capacities. And we have here sort of two ends of the spectrum. I mean, that's about as small a strap as you're ever gonna run into and it fits this load pretty well. This is a much bigger and longer and heavier strap. It'll hold a serious load, and sometimes you've really got to hold something down, and sometimes too much is always enough. I mean, it's like concrete, right? You're never sorry when you have plenty, and as long as you can deal with the long floppy end that is left over after you tie down a short load with a long strap, no harm, no foul. Here's how I do that. The downside to this particular hook is it won't go through this particular stake pocket. But if you're careful with this thicker, heavier strap, it'll kind of hold itself where it goes. Once you've got your load tied down and you're, you're, you've got the twist and the line and everything snug and your hooks are there and everything's safe, you've got to figure out what, in this case, I do with probably 20 feet of extra webbing. Because if that gets loose on the freeway and gets underneath the tires, let's just say it's a catastrophe. 
So something that I use every time because it's fast and it's reliable is my good old chain stitch or daisy chain or single stitch crochet method that I use to store my extension cords. In this case, it goes like this. The first move, just like winding up an extension cord, is to create the loop by pulling a bite. There's a bite. The bite goes around the line and another bite, another loop, comes through there. And now we're off to the races. You just pull a bite, pull a bite, pull a bite, and then, since you don't want that conglomeration of loops to fly out under the tire either, you put the loop in your left hand on the far side of the line and take the fresh loop around the line, thereby securing it to something that'll keep it off the road, and you do, you do it again. And wherever you want, you do it again. And then to terminate, you take the bitter end, stick it through, give it a tug. And even though it looks like an OCD nightmare, it works so good. It takes no time, and most importantly, when you get to the job, bam, you're unloaded. Now, I will admit that you don't see that snarl of strapping wrapped around the strap itself going down the highway very often. What you see more often is something like this. I can't even do it. Forget it. You just can't, in any kind of a reasonable period of time, with a strap as long as this one, secure the bitter end safely in any other way except chain stitching around the standing part. So you may have seen, I know that I've seen, situations where people don't know what to do with the bitter end and they just take the end and go somewhere on the trailer and just tie it down, you know, with a knot. They just tie it to something, you know, with a Mickey Mouse series of half hitches or however they do it, and that's okay. Just make sure you do something to keep that bitter end from getting under the tire of the trailer when you're going down the road 60 miles an hour and tearing your world apart. So in exactly the same way as I like to get my fuel, my gas, on the way home from work instead of on the way to work. I like to save time when I'm tying my loads down and deploying the strap and take a little extra time when I'm putting them away. Because there's little in life that's worse than needing to tie something down and realizing you've got a knot in the rope or in the strap. Now there are different ways to do it. You can feed them into a five gallon bucket. We had some people send us a really nifty little camouflage canvas bag method for stuffing the strap in there and it was admirable. But my habit and what I am convinced is best for me is to simply wind them up like this. And by the way, you'll find out that strap manufacturers tend to make the length to the close hook somehow convenient for putting things up. Now that might fall apart. It might kind of get messed up in the back of the truck, but at least it started out, you know, organized enough that I can get the work done the next time I need it. Ratchet straps are terrific. They will save you time and they will save you a shipwreck. But you've probably got some more ideas about things that I either A, don't know, or B, forgot to mention in this or the previous video. So would you put them in the comments? Because that's where we learn the meat and potatoes around this channel. Now, one more thing. However good a ratchet strap is, it should never be a substitute for understanding knots and ropes and rigging. So don't stop because you can operate a ratchet strap. Go ahead and get a piece of rope and learn how to use that tool as well. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.